Go ahead, Chris, you are on. All right, let me share my screen. Um, and I apologize in advance, I'm not a Zoom whiz. So you guys tell me, do y'all see my, my slides here? Cool, all right, yeah. let me get this opened up. All right, so Jay, if you would be kind enough to kind of play uh, moderator, I have a tendency of just like going. Um, so please like stop me, reel me in, do whatever you need to do. Uh, apologies in advance. Um, I'm from Paula Clark's neck of the woods up in New Jersey. So I've got a little bit of a potty mouth every now and again. I will do my best, but I get a little fired up talking about this stuff. When I get a little fired up, the language is not as good. So if you got young ears, you know, just a forewarning. All right. So um, if you would, in the chat, I always like to play this fun game. Um, if you are not working expires or if you currently have team members that are not working expires, I would love to like hear the reasons hear the objections, hear like the, um, like, here's my hold up, here's my, like, what's stopping me. And then Jay, if we can, in a second here, we'll kind of just run through those real quick. Uh, while you guys are throwing that in the chat, my name is Chris Elliott. I service the Metro Richmond, Virginia market. We're in central Virginia, um, just south of Jay. Uh, we are west of Virginia Beach, and then we are east of uh, the, the rest of the state of Virginia. And that's my social, if you guys want to connect after this. If I can help any of you or your teammates uh, with expireds, um, it is something I'm passionate about, love giving back. So hit me up on the socials. I would love to connect with you and I'd love to be of service. Uh, once again, all of these slides you can access in the chat. I've already sent you the link, so you got them. All right, so re results from expireds, kind of what I've been able to create since 2017, where I've been working these, um, you know, kind of full time. Uh, closed 110 transactions from this lead pillar. Uh, that's equated to just under $950,000 GCI. Does not include business from, you know, repeat referral business from those clients. So it's probably well over a million dollars that this has made me. Top line revenue. Uh, in 2022, the year of like low, no inventory, uh, my market Metro Richmond was sub one month supply of inventory for the whole year. We are still sub, month, sub one month supply of inventory. Um, in a sub one month supply of inventory market, there were still 804 expired and released opportunities. So I say that because I hear a lot of times, and granted, I've only sold real estate in Richmond, Virginia, like I've never lived in another market where I've worked. But when I hear people say like, oh, there's no expires, there's no canceled, there's no release in my market, I call a little bit of BS because like, it doesn't mean there were zero. So I would encourage you um, if you're a team leader, if you're somebody looking to do this yourself, like actually run the numbers and, and see what that total addressable market is with regard to this lead pillar. Of that, I had a approximately 1.5% conversion ratio. So I sold 12 listings last year from 804, um, um, you know, opportunities. So very, very low conversion rate. Uh, but with what I'm going to show you, it, it doesn't take a, a, incredible amount of time and energy to, to kind of work this lead source once you have the system set up. <clears throat> uh, this lead source cost me approximately $11,000 last year. Uh, you can do it for as low as like $6,000 in the year. Uh, that's an eight and a half percent ROI or times ROI. Uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, even in a year where it was only 12 transactions and it, you know, low inventory, it still netted me a little under a hundred grand or top line revenue, a hundred grand. Uh, my hourly rate calling. So expireds take me probably like an hour to an hour and a half a day uh, if you're really gonna work them aggressively. Uh, but that was still $332 per hour. Um, so, you know, and if, if you guys are team leads, maybe figure out the math for your team of, hey, even if you cut that, 50, you know, 50-50 split, like it's still 150 bucks an hour. Beats working at, uh, at McDonald's. Um, all right, so Jay, run me through just a handful of the roadblocks that, folks are dealing with or, or kind of why they're not working this lead source? Well, these guys weren't really good about putting in here, but a couple of people, nice. they, haven't, they haven't systematized it and then no one's getting any momentum. You know, they call once and then move on. Um, and for me, I didn't want to get the hate rejections. <laughs> so. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So I like to, I'm, I'm going to break this up into this talk up into two segments. So the first piece, we're going to talk about mindset, and I'm really going to hammer that home. 
I'm a big believer in Tony Robbins quote of like business is 80% mindset and 20% tactics, right? But I can give you all of the tactic strategies, like every, I can give you my whole playbook. If, if, if you don't, or if your team doesn't wrap their head around the fact that this is a good opportunity, all of that's just going to be noise. So I'm really going to hammer that home. Uh, kind of a, a change of a Henry Ford quote, uh, whether you think expires will work for you or not, you're probably right. So we've got to see this as a viable opportunity before we even get there. Uh, fun fact, Henry Ford was worth more when he died than uh, I think uh, Jeff Bezos um, and Elon Musk are currently. So anyway, uh, why I personally started working expired this may or may not resonate with you. I'm not originally from my market. I grew up in Northern New Jersey, went to school in South Carolina. Um, I live in Richmond, Virginia. So like I didn't have a large sphere of influence, people I played ball with. So if you got somebody on your team or maybe that's you, like this is a good lead source where you can literally pick it up tomorrow. Within 30 days, you could start producing results. Um, I didn't start with much money. Uh, so whether that's you or, you know, it, it's a low cost opportunity. Um, if, um, you know, it is, uh, it's a lead source for listings. Um, I think we all learned the last couple of years, like listings are the name of the game uh, and they do put you at the top of the food chain, personal opinion. So um, I, I was fortunate. I had a broker that like encouraged me to get my own listings from day one. Uh, it is the most strat fastest and straightforward way to a paycheck, personal belief. Um, God bless Jason Pantana. I think you should do everything he says. But like, you know, when he starts talking about funnels and this and that and, you know, clicks and like, I'm kind of a knuckle dragger in the sense that like, it just makes sense. We've got a cell, we have somebody that's raised their hand and identified themselves as somebody that owns a home, right? It's a listing opportunity. They've also identified that they believe in the aging concept, or at least they did at one point. And I would venture to guess there's very few lead sources where somebody's going to raise their hand or, or, or be identifiable of, hey, I own a home. Hey, I want to sell. And oh, by the way, at least at some point, I believed in the aging concept. So that's why I think expires are so valuable. Uh, personal beliefs that have served me, once again, just kind of hammering the mindset piece. Uh, listings put you at the name, you know, top of the food chain. Uh, I think we all know that. Uh, expires are one of the most profitable and potent lead sources available for listings. So I don't know about you guys. I would rather call expires for eight hours than like chase an internet buyer for eight hours or one hour. Um, personal belief. Uh, you or your teammates may need to start like their work day earlier than they are currently to work this lead source effectively. I don't know about your teammates. I'd rather like get my ass out of the, the house and get in the office and start at eight and be home to like have dinner with my family and not miss nights and weekends. than I would, you know, giving that time up just so I can run buyers around town. Um, so full disclosure, I started this lead source as something I needed to get. Like I was new in the business. I didn't have a lot of money. I needed a paycheck. Like I was there to see what Chris could get for himself. What I've discovered, just like any lead source, just like this business in general, that if you're a team leader, you've kind of figured out, this lead source is about being of service to other people. Um, if you are a good team leader, if you're within the TF network, if you're plugging in, so to speak, and you're doing all yes, the things you need changed. to do. We are now closing on Friday. Glad they're closing on Friday. Um, you and your agents, are going to be better than most of the knuckleheads out in the marketplace, or at least in my marketplace, you know, and I'm sure in your marketplace, it's nothing different. So we owe it to these prospects to get in front of them, to do what we need to do to be of service, to help them achieve their real estate goals. And that's kind of just where I come from. Uh, there is nothing to be afraid of. So you guys are from all parts of the country. I don't know how phones work in your market. I don't know how your teammates' phones work in your market. I've never had somebody reach through the phone and punch me in the face, right? I've never had somebody show up my office with a gun wanting to shoot me. Like there really is nothing to be afraid of. And oh, by the way, if your agent or you fuddle the call, like it was an opportunity you weren't going to miss any, you were going to miss anyway if you hadn't called them, right? So like I've never, Jay, I've never called and expired and, and like, then be upset with me that I called them and say, hey, Chris, we were actually going to call you to list your home, list our home. But like now that you called us and annoyed us, like we're not going to list our home with you. Like it, it's an opportunity you're going to miss anyway. Uh, and, not and, everybody. 
And Chris, parts of Richmond, those of you guys know, parts of it are pretty rough. So you could have some nasty people. <laughs> um, it, it, I don't know. It's easier than certain parts of the Northeast, I think, as far as friendliness. Um, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, not everybody's a grumpy asshole. And even the grumps eventually warm up. So yes, these people are going to be a little annoyed, right? They listed their home with a real estate professional with a goal in mind. That real estate professional probably told them that they were going to be able to achieve a result. It did not happen. So not only like did they get misled, they got the gut punch of their house was rejected. And now they've got a million agents calling them. Like, of course, they're going to be upset. So it's par for the course. Realize, though, like, just don't take it personally and just keep moving on. Uh, once people know that you're going to be there to be of service and to help them achieve their goal and like you're not going away, they do eventually warm up. Some of the nicest clients I have are the folks that were expired and then like we rescued the day. Uh, nobody knows or cares who you are. So I love this one. Like I talk to agents like at conferences, at elite retreat, like, and they're like, but you don't understand. We're in a small town, my reputation, like my brand, like nobody cares. Like get over yourself. Nobody knows who you are. Um, nobody cares. Um, once again, I don't know how things work in your market. Uh, when a listing agreement expires, uh, you don't have a client anymore, nor does that agent that lost the listing. So like, we're not stealing anybody's clients. Right. And oh, by the way, if they've got such a like rock solid relationship with their previous agent, you're not getting the listing anyway, or your, your, your agents are not getting the listing. So like, we need to get over that. Like, Hey, these are my clients or those are their clients or like, I don't want to step on you know, uh, Phyllis's toes or, or whoever. Um, I personally believe, whether it's true or not, that I'm one of the better options that folks have in town. And I think we need to all kind of personally believe that of ourselves. We need to get our agents believing that as well. Because when you have that conviction of, hey, I know I can get this done for you. I know I have something to offer. You're going to call with a little bit more confidence, a little bit more conviction. Like if I called Jay and I said, hey, Jay, I've got Super Bowl tickets. Something came up. I can't make it. Do you want these tickets? If Jay gets mad at me and says, Chris, you, you know, you piece of whatever, you know, I'm a soccer fan. Like, why would you even call me with with football tickets? That doesn't make the Super Bowl tickets less any less valuable. Right. Like the, the problems with Jay, not with with, you know, the, the offer. So and. and Kind of roundabout way of saying like when you know you have something of value to offer like you're able to make more calls and kind of the rejection just falls off your back um i have found in my market once again i don't know your market i'm really only competing about five to ten agents at any given time okay expired like a lot of lead sources is one of those things where people will kind of like be a flash in the pan and then they'll give up because they realize it's hard it's work it's something you have to it, actually at the master. It's not just like something you show up and like all of a sudden you're, you're printing, printing money. So it's only about five to 10 players that are somewhat consistently calling. Uh, and then of those, there's really only like two players in my market that I'm going against. And the cool thing is like, once you realize how to beat those two players and what their weaknesses are, like it really starts getting fun. Uh, if you lead generate, you don't have to tolerate. So like one of my favorite quotes from the late great Bill Pipes, uh, if you are willing as an agent, as a team leader to go out and generate your own leads, you're in the driver's seat of your future. You are no longer beholden to these lead generation companies, be it Zillow, be it Realtor, be it like whatever new flash in the pan, hoobidoobie.com, right? If you're willing to go out there and generate these opportunities on your own, you're in the driver's seat. Any questions so far? I know I've been like talking a mile a minute. Love the mindset. This is awesome. Beautiful, cool. beautiful. All right, what we need to get started. Uh, the basics. You need a computer. You need Wi-Fi. You need a cell phone. Hopefully, everybody checks those three boxes. Uh, the real big thing that we need to to really get started is some sort of data subscription, where we can get these expired leads fed to us uh, on a daily basis. Okay. So if you are a team leader, it is not worth your time to like try to figure this out manually, right? Um, if you've got some agents that really want to bootstrap it, like, sure, yes, you can just look on the MLS. Like when I started, I couldn't even afford the data subscription. I would literally just show up at somebody's house, knock on the front door. So like, that's an option if you really want to bootstrap it. But I would say if we want to do this at somewhat scalability, uh, we need a data subscription. 
from what I understand, Vulcan 7 is the Cadillac. Um, so I recommend there, but I have heard that like different markets, different data subscriptions are better or worse. Um, but Vulcan, from what I understand, is 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 the Cadillac. Uh, the ROI is so off the charts on this lead source. Like, don't go cheap on the data. Don't be that person that says, hey, I'm going to go with so-and-so company because they're 50 bucks cheaper. Like, it's laughable uh, as somebody that's been doing this for, for a while. So you can start there. Now, a lot of these, uh, these data subscriptions have a dialer service built into them. They're usually not the best dialer. Like Vulcan has a single line dialer. It's pretty basic, but like my first year, I was able to crank a hundred grand in commissions just with a single line dialer. So like you can do it. Um, but I think where you eventually want to graduate to, you want to have a dual monitor set up just so I can have, you know, MLS on, on one side and then my dialer on the other screen and just be able to look at both at the same time. Uh, we want to invest in a decent headset. I've got a Jabra, like $300 deal, Bluetooth. Um, I've got teammates that use Apple AirPods, uh, but I think you want something other than just like your phone, right? Um, people being able to hear you clearly is, is pretty important when you're doing any type of calling lead source. Chris, this is Sorry. really good. Do you <clears throat> have any other sources that you try to clean to get better contact information other than Balkan and Mojo and all those things? Um, it would probably be a smart idea that I, but I currently don't. Uh, one thing I'll add to that, Chris, if I may, Jay, mm -hmm. um, one thing I was doing with expires and I'm going to start doing it again. Uh, in the MLS, you can map out expires by area. And if you run a team, you can have these agents do it in their specific areas, pull out all the expired inventory, select and map tool print the map and hand it to an agent to go in person. So if it's in their town, they can easily map 10, 15 properties that have expired over the last 30 days that haven't been relisted. And that's a good opportunity to go in person. We all know in person, obviously, uh, there is a chance, uh, Chris, they can punch you in the face, but it's less likely, right? If you're if you're dressed apart and, and obviously you have a good door opener and a professional uh, appearance and message, right? Yep, 100%. Um, all right, so if we really want to go at a high level with this, I would encourage you to eventually graduate to a Mojo dialer. Um, the reason Mojo is so powerful is it's just, there's a lot more that you can do with it. It's a little bit more of a robust product. Uh, the big thing with Mojo is it allows you to dial three numbers at one time. So like the biggest time lost in working this lead source is just sitting on the phone waiting while it's while it's ringing, excuse me. So if you can dial three numbers at once and then it just connects you to the one that actually picks up the phone, you're gonna be able to get in more conversations per hour. So that's kind of where it just becomes somewhat of a numbers game. Um, all right, so what to say. So this is where uh, in the, uh, in the like when I'm talking to somebody sidebar at a conference or like, all right, what do I need to say? What's the magic script? Do you use Tom scripts? Do you use Mike scripts? Like you know, dear baby Jesus, will you whisper in my ear like the magic words to say? Um, does anybody know what the problem is with scripts? You sound scripted. You sound scripted. <laughs> yep, yep. What else? You, sound, you stop thinking like on your feet. Man. You don't Somebody sound like you, you sound like everybody else. 100%. You sound like everybody else. But I think the biggest thing is you can't think on your feet. So I would encourage you, scripts are a very good place to start. And I think we, we like with my agents, like we start them on a script because I, I want to have them some frame of reference of where we want to go with the conversation, where we want to take it. Give them a little bit of a confidence booster of like, I at least have some framework that I can work with. Uh, the problem with scripts, uh, just like the, the great philosopher Mike Tyson says, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. So the problem with the script is like the prospect is not going to follow the script, right? And if all they know is the script, then it's like, oh shit, like, sir, ma'am, I'm sorry, like, this is not on my paper. Can we can we go back to my paper? So um, we eventually want to learn how to dance with people, you know, fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee, um, and that's going to take practice. That's going to take time. That's going to take repetitions, right? This is like where the mastery aspect comes into play here. So there is no magic script. You got to learn how to dance with prospects. Um, the cool thing is just like anything else, 
you're only going to get but so many objections, right? This is like super old school stuff, right? There's only so many objections that you're going to get. So it's the just more bothering that, me. Um, hopefully they're not bothering them. Uh, the more we can learn those scripts and master them or get our agents to master them, the more confidence that they're going to have when they go out there and the more opportunities they're going to be able to create from the same amount of conversations. I personally only have two goals uh, on any single phone call. Number one, I want to determine if this is an opportunity worth pursuing, right? So not every, not every prospect you get on the phone is going to be worth pursuing. If like their mom is the real estate agent or like their best friend is their sorority sister who is also their agent and like they don't want to hear what you have to say. Honestly, that's a tree that I don't think is worth climbing. Personally, I've just done enough of these where like it's just there's no opportunity. So I, I think a lot of people give up on leads way too soon. But I, I've just found like there, there are some leads where it's just a, it's a dead end and you're better off just moving on. But from there, I, I'm trying to set an appointment. And there's like multiple different ways you could do it. Like, but I, I'm just trying to figure out what angle I can take to set an appointment. So like, I kind of joke, I'm like SEAL Team 6 when they were going to kill Bin Laden. Like, we'll climb over the fence, we'll come in the helicopter, we'll like crash the helicopter, we'll go on the top, like whatever we need to do to like smoke them, like we're putting them in the ground. So, and that's how I look at like a phone call, of like whatever I need to do to get an appointment, like within moral, legal and ethical bounds, like, that that's the end goal. That's the mission is to book an appointment. I'm not trying to like sell them on my services on the phone. I'm not trying to explain everything on the phone. I'm not like running comps with them on the phone. I'm I'm trying to figure out a reason, excuse, uh, some sort some sort of something where it makes sense for us to get together either in person or on a video call. A uh, couple pro tips: repeat and affirm. So this is something you know, simple sales stuff that we all know, but just repeating back to them what they say and affirming. Um, one of the things that I see a lot of like newer agents that are calling is like they try to convince people that they're smarter than them or that they have the wrong answer. Like they are, they have the superior knowledge or whatever. Um, good luck with that phone call, right? If you, you got to be agreeable. You got to like, as dumb as their idea is, like you've got to not make them feel like they've got a dumb idea um, on the phone. And affirming helps with that. Uh, mirror and match. So if you can't tell, like I'm super high D, uh, that does not work well with everybody. So we've got to somewhat learn their disc profile. Uh, if you've got a super high D, short, sweet to the point, I'm going to be short, sweet to the point. If they are life of the party, I bubbly, like I'm going to, you know, fake it till I make it with that. Uh, if they are super reserved, they're slow, they're the yes, they like to think, like I'm going to slow down, I'm going to be calm. If they're like Mr. Analytical or Mrs. Analytical, I'm going to be a little bit Mr. or Mrs. Analytical. So you got to be somewhat of a chameleon with people on the phone. As with any lead source, uh, you got to have tactical empathy. So we talked about earlier, like these people trusted a real estate professional, sell their property. They screwed the pooch. And now you're coming in like the, the same person from the same industry in their eyes. And you're telling them you could do something differently. Like, of course, they're like, we're going to have to build some trust here. Uh, we're also going to have to little empathize with people on the phone. Like we don't need to sit there and listen to their whole life story. We don't need to cry on the phone with them. But if you are like your agents are like me and you kind of struggle to care sometimes, or like, you're just like Mr. or Mrs. Solution. Like, I don't need, I don't need the story. Like, let me just tell you how you, how I can get you there. Um, we've got to give a little bit of empathy on these phone calls. Ask no base questions. So if you've not taken the time to study Chris Voss, I would highly, highly encourage it. Um, instead of trying to get them to say yes, if you can get them to say no, it's going to be much more effective. They're going to feel in control and you can kind of word these questions where, Hey, would it be a bad idea for us to get together? Would it, you know, would you be morally opposed to me just sitting down with you to show you an alternative option? So those same sales questions that you would, you know, pose, if you can kind of frame them in no base questions, uh, you're going to get a little farther with these folks. And Last but certainly not least, don't settle for the brush off. So if they tell you, hey, I'm going to call you back, send me an email, shoot me a text, put something in the mail, like the trap that is very easy to fall into is like, oh, I'm going to send them this super cool, slick high note. And they're going to be so uber impressed 
with my high note and my video and my marketing piece that I spent too much time on, like they're, they're going to call me back most definitely. Or like, they're definitely going to talk to their spouse and get back to me. Like, good luck. You know, uh, I, I would say very, very few percentage are going to do that. So if they say, Hey, like, you know, I got to check with my wife and see when we're available. Hey, tell me like, when are you guys typically available? Like, does your schedule change every day or do you guys somewhat follow somewhat of a schedule? Or, hey, I can certainly send you an email, ma'am, sir. It's going to be a little boilerplate in nature. Just it's going to be somewhat generic. Um, I, I'd really love the opportunity to sit down with you, though, just so I can customize that for you or, or show you a, a specific game plan for your property of what we can do differently. So if you don't get an appointment on the phone, your likelihood of getting an appointment subsequent or them coming back to you is going to be uh, super slim. Any questions so far? I have cool. a couple of quick questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is Mariah from Chico. Um, it And you might already just be going into the next kind of slide of it, but with that, obviously ultimate goal is to get an appointment set on the phone, which I'm really good at conversations and figuring out kind of details and that goes well. Um, my question is, if you don't get it, then what? Like, what is the follow-up method? How often are you supposed to call them back? Are you sending them things once a week? Like, that's what I'm really hoping for because I feel like I'm good phones. I just need to know, okay, what's next? I need to get better on phones, obviously, to get the appointment set that day. But if you can't, then what? What would be the next best step? Absolutely. I got you covered. If you don't mind, I'll cover that in like two slides. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anything else before I move? Keep moving. Cool. All right. So I'll give you my opener. This is pretty much the only thing that stays consistent on every single phone call. I'm a firm believer, like a lot of your success or failure is going to determine on like how you open these phone calls, because a lot of these folks want to get off the phone immediately. So if you can't hook them in the first like 10 seconds of being on the phone, um, your success rate is going to be relatively low. So my opener, uh, good morning, ma'am, sir. I'm in the South. Uh, my name is Chris Elliott. I was calling, looking for the owner of the property at insert address. Is that you by chance? So, uh, good morning, ma'am, sir. Once again, I'm in the South. I, I never hurts to show a little respect. Uh, my name is Chris Elliott. Personal belief. If you're only giving your first name, uh, I think you're being a little cryptic. And it kind of sounds like one of those phone calls. But if you're willing to throw your full name out there, in my mind, consciously, subconsciously, it shows I've got nothing to hide. Okay. I also don't announce my company, my team, uh, the fact that I'm a realtor. Um, I don't recommend mentioning the. Now I know you're supposed to, right? Uh, hopefully, nobody from the FCC is is on this uh, on this Zoom, and hopefully, Jay doesn't send it to him. Um, I don't. So I used to be with Remax. I'm no longer with Remax. Uh, I used to say, hey, this is Chris, Chris with Remax, and like our prospects don't know how real estate works. So they'd be like, oh, I've already talked to somebody from Remax. Like, I'm good to go. Like, can you update your system with your company? And I was like, shit. Uh, so I don't recommend that. Uh, nobody knows who our team is. Like, as cool as we think we are, as much of a brand as we think we are, we have, like, most prospects don't know what our team name is. Um, and then I don't like to announce a realtor status because I think immediately when you say realtor, it's like, hey, it's one of those phone calls. Whereas if I can, if I can keep their attention for 10 more seconds, just that curiosity effect, I'm going to have that much more, I'm going to be able to have that much more success with them. Um, I was looking for the owner of the property at 123 Maple. So I don't try to say, hey, is this Mrs. Jones? Is this Mr. So-and-so? Uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't want to fuddle the name. That's a good way to break rapport immediately. Uh, the other thing is if you're calling Mrs. Jones and like she used to be Mrs. Jones, but like six months ago, and now she's not Mrs. Jones anymore, like that's going to be a rough phone call, right? So I just stay away from their name. I've never had anybody get upset with me, get butt hurt that I mispronounced their street name. Um, and then I say, is that you by chance? And they say, yes, no, maybe so. Second line, I noticed your property came off the market last night. I was curious to know if you're still planning on selling or if plans to change permanently. The reason I like the word permanently is because it kind of forces them to think through of like, well, no, I don't plan on dying in this house, right? And it usually will elicit some sort of response of like, 
this is my thought process of where I go next with this property of, hey, no, we're going to re we're going to relist it with the same agent or no, we're going to try again in the spring or like whatever. Half the battle with these phone calls is getting inside of their head and finding out like what's swirling around in their head as far as what their next move is. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. So here's my calling cadence. Mariah, this is for you. All right. So if you guys go into the slides, you can actually click and see for every day if it's like if it's a hyperlink, you can see the voicemail that I leave on that given day. Um, full disclosure, it's nothing remarkable. It's nothing like groundbreaking. Okay. But so I start at 750. Like I know you're supposed to start at eight, right? I started 750 because in my mind, it's close enough where eh, I might get in trouble, but it's kind of, I'm not being too, you know, obnoxious. But I also know that most people are going to be rule followers and they're going to start at eight and the whole wave of people are going to call them at eight. So if I can call at 750, I have a much higher connection rate because I'm hitting them before everybody else and their mother is hitting them. Um, I have noticed the difference. Like I've just been getting busy growing the team lately. I've been starting at eight as, whereas I used to start at like 745, 750. I've noticed a drop in my connection ratios, uh, over the last year, uh, just having that much less conversations. The other thing is if you can get to these people first, or if your agents can get to these people first and have them have the first conversation, you're going to have a much better result than like, if you're the 50th agent they've talked to, because they're already like, they're done. Like the appointment. Like they're either checked out of the process, the appointment's already been set. So like a lot of this success is being the first person to talk to them. So like if you're starting, in my opinion, at nine o'clock, at 10, at 12, like I talk to people and they're like, these expireds are always like grouchy. I'm like, what time are you calling? They're like, well, I started 10. I'm like, yeah, like they've already talked to 40 agents. Of course they're upset. So I started 750. I will call them from three different phone numbers. Now, the beauty of Mojo is you can upload like 10 different numbers to where it shows up as like 10 different caller IDs that you're calling from. I call from three different numbers. The reason I call from three different numbers is they're getting pelted with 20, 30, 40 phone calls. I might as well be three of them. And I've never had anybody really piece together the fact that like it's me calling from three different numbers or I've had a couple people that have pieced that together, but like who cares so what? On the third phone call, I am then leaving a voicemail. And it's typically after eight o'clock that I'm leaving the voicemail. I recommend doing that because if somebody really wanted to you know, call you the carpet, you don't want to be leaving a voicemail before you were supposed to be calling them, if that makes sense. Uh, if I am not able to get them on the phone, I'm trying again at 1130. The reason I do that is like the wave of initial phone calls is done. Some people are going to pick up at 1130 or maybe on their lunch break. Maybe they got something where they have a job where like, you know, they can't be on the phone or they were at a meeting or whatever. And then if I don't have appointments, I'm going to call them again from four to six. So that's day one. And I just kind of follow this cadence until I make contact. So if I don't make contact on day two, I'm calling again from eight to nine. I'm calling again, 1130. And then I'm going to call in again from four to six if I don't have appointments. And I'm following this cadence all the way through day seven. Chris, is this for the new expireds? This is for new expireds. Yeah. So I am fairly aggressive days one through seven because a lot of these folks that expire, they're either going to, I would say anywhere from 50 to 75% that are going to relist or going to relist, um, you know, couple months down the road, but there is that 25 to 50% that's going to relist, you know, in the next two weeks. So I want the opportunity to get in front of them. If I can't get them on the phone, I'm not getting in front of them. If I'm not getting in front of them, I'm not getting the listing. So we got to be super aggressive getting in front of these people. It's going to piss people off that aren't interested in talking to you or not interested in relisting, but the folks that are interested in talking to an agent and do want to relist, like they're going to appreciate it or maybe they don't appreciate it, but like you're going to get that opportunity and you have an opportunity to convert it to, to an appointment. If I don't get a hold of them day seven or within that seven day period, I'm then going to call them at day 21. If I can't get a hold of them day 21, I'm going to call them day 60. If I don't get a hold of them day 60, I am then going to call them every 30 days um, for the first year. Okay. And then after that, they go into a 90-day bucket. 
where I call them literally every single 90 days until like I retire, they sell or they die. And if they die, figure out who the executor is and start following up the estate. Now, here's the, here's the trick. Here's like the secret sauce. You've got to build this out in some sort of action plan, which you can do in Mojo to where new lead comes in, you hit go, or like you have a Zapier that automatically hits go. And it literally just builds it out to where your agents just have to show up, clean their plate every day. So like, I got to show up, I got to make all my day one calls. I got to make all my day two, my day threes, my day four, my day fives, my day six. And you're not having to show up and think through like, where are the, where's this person in the process? What like the, the magic is in the consistency and the persistence in the persistency, if that's a word. So I would encourage you, if you really want to attack this, you got to build this out to, to where it's systematic, to where literally your job every day is to just show up and make your calls, do your tasks, do what you're supposed to do, which I know you've heard before. Um, also too, the, the beautiful thing about Mojo, you can pre-record the voicemails. So like what you'll find is like, basically what we're doing is we're thinking through like what voicemail makes sense on day one, what voicemail makes sense on day two, day three, day four, day seven, what's the messaging on day 21, day 60, and then into infinity, right? So there's Give us all- an example of what one of those voicemails sounds like. Day one, hey, this is Chris Elliott over at the Elliott Real Estate team. I noticed your property came off the market. I just had a quick question. Uh, if you don't mind, give me a call back. And then like day three or four is, hey, I know I'm being a little aggressive with you. I, I would imagine you wish your, your previous agent was a little aggressive, is a little bit more aggressive in getting your property sold. If you'd like to chat, I'd love to talk to you. Give me a call. Day 21, hey, I hope the phone calls have died down by now. Hey, I'm, I'm still here, still willing to help if, if you need any service. Um, give me a call if I could be of any service or if you'd just like to see, you know, kind of what that looks like. You know, day 365 and beyond, hey, I noticed when your home came off the market a while back, just curious to see if you've had any more thoughts of selling or if you'd just be curious to know um, what your property is worth in today's market. So if you're on this call, you guys are all smart people. It's literally just taking the time, slowing down and stopping and thinking like what makes sense to say depending on where they are in the process. Um, and if you want, you could just listen to my voicemails and re-record them and kind of make it your own type thing. Chris, have you, as you've gotten busy, have you ever handed this off to an ISA to do some of it? I am like right at that cusp of I'm I'm realizing I'm not able to keep up with it. But I will say, Jay, this takes me like an hour a day. Like once you have it built out, you figured out Mojo, like it doesn't take a long time, right? Because like the calls, like the like the the day one through sevens, I can burn through in like 30 minutes typically. You know, more time if there's if there's a lot of expires that day, if it's the first day of the month. And then the subsequent calls, you know, uh, throughout the day take me like 15 minutes a pop. So it's it's not a whole lot of time. Right. And especially if you got agents on your team, like with the market slowing down, I, I would imagine they've got the time. Uh, all right. So that's my cadence. If I haven't made contact, once I've made contact, leads go into several different buckets, depending on the conversation. So if they are going to sell in six months or less, I will then move them over to my CRM. And I, I just follow up very specifically based on whatever, like if they tell me, hey, we're going to do something in three months, I'm calling them in 45 days. If they tell me they're doing something in three months, I'm going to check in. Um, or if they say they're going to do something in six months, I'm checking in at the three month mark. Hey, I know we're, we're still three months out, but you know, whatever. Um, if it is a F off, I'm not selling anymore, or it's beyond the six month, I am then putting them in a 90 day bucket, which you can build out in Mojo and you can build a 90 day action plan where literally it will just, the system will prompt me to call them every single 90 days until the end of time. And I'll just keep following up. I've made a lot of money with like the long-term follow-up. So you got to call a lot of people, but it's, it's been profitable for me. Um, if they've rented the property, oh God, what did I do? That's a voicemail. Okay. If they've rented the property, I'm going to put them in a 90 day uh, rented uh, bucket uh, just because the voicemail is a little bit different. The conversation and the messaging is a little bit different if it's a rental property versus an owner occupant. 
Uh, I did start because eventually I started getting bogged down with the 90 day calls. So if they're like super low motivation, super far out, I'll move in into a 180 day bucket. Uh, as I mentioned, these buckets run on automatic action plans. Uh, always, always, always get an email address. Uh, Homebot, if you're not using it, is very good. Figure out an excuse to get their email address. Uh, if you are not already sending a weekly email newsletter with videos, I think you're missing the boat. Um, I have seen where we've gotten folks that have reached out to us from our emails. I've noticed where like the conversation becomes very different because I've established authority, I've established rapport through the weekly email and through the videos. So always, always, always try to get emails. And then if you're not like putting these people into custom audiences and Google and Facebook and running retargeting ads with the videos that you're supposed to be creating, um, I think you're missing the boat. And it's very, very effective to be able to stay in front of these people. And it's super, super cheap. A um, couple like last pro tips here. Uh, get started, take action. If you do nothing with this call, uh, if you wasted an hour of your life. So, uh, you know, please do something. Uh, your goals, dreams, or this could be you or your agents. Uh, your goals, dreams, fears of failure have to be uh, bigger than your desire for comfort. This is not like a fun activity. It can get fun once you're able to produce results, but like this is not something I do on the weekends for, for kicks. Uh, but you got to have something that's driving you that's a little bit bigger than, than the discomfort of like getting yelled at or somebody getting grumpy with you. Uh, guys, this is not hard work. And I would encourage you to remind your agents, this is not hard work. Like being a police officer in a rough like inner city neighborhood, that's hard work. Living in Ukraine right now in the winter, that's hard work. Going to war is hard work. Sitting in an air conditioning office and making phone calls to some people that may or may not be slightly upset with you, like this is not hard work. It's a joke, uh, especially for the money that we make. Uh, courage is not the absence of fear. It's, it's the moving forward in the presence of fear. So if you're scared, welcome to the club. Uh, we all are. Cool news is once you start like going into it, you're not scared anymore because you realize there is no boogeyman. Um, it is unreasonable for you and your agents to be good at this when they start. They are going to suck. It is okay. It is a very natural place to start. It would be kind of weird if you started and you were amazing right out the gate. But the goal is to rep this, practice this, make enough phone calls where it is unreasonable for you not to be good. I made 35,000 dials through Mojo last year, approximately. Um, I don't know how many conversations that was, but like I've gotten okay at the phones because I've like, I've done it enough. Right. Jay, it's just like, it's just like a sport. Like you, you practice enough. Like it's kind of like weird if you're not getting good, if you've practiced so much. So drill it till it, it just, you know, it's second nature. And um, also I've, I've dropped in the comments, guys, if anybody wants to start a practice group for role-playing for these expireds, Put it in chat and I'll send out a group email. And um, I have somebody on my team who I'm volunteering volunteering to, 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 to do it. So drop your email in there if you want to do this and take it seriously. All right. So super like fancy new school, right? I'm sure you've never heard of this before. Uh, get five different role play partners and practice with them every single morning. Don't keep practicing with the same person. Uh, and I want to encourage you, don't role play with somebody that is not actually making phone calls, which I like. I didn't realize was a thing, but I found out that is kind of a thing. Uh, because then you're going to get these weird like, like BS conversations that never actually happen in real life. So I want to role play with people that are like actually doing the work because then I'm going to get real objections. I'm, like They're going to understand really how phone calls go. But I like five different role play partners because I'm getting different personalities on the phone. By the way, if there's any female agents that want to role play, like all I've always had broskies that I role play with. And like, that's cool. But like not everybody I call is, is a dude. So if there's anybody out there that's on the Eastern time frame, I would love to chat. Um, this is also my accountability to like I start at 730, which gets me out of the office. And then I role play 730 to 745. And then by the time the call's over, like I'm at the office. So it's all, it can double as like a accountability to get out the door. Uh, I would not recommend you or your agents call with your personal cell phone number. You don't want to get your personal cell flagged as um, spam likely or whatever uh, we're calling it. Uh, so get some like phone numbers set up in your dialer that are specific to that. 
Um, full disclosure, this is something I'm kind of like sifting through right now. Uh, Mojo has a whitelist service where they can whitelist your phone numbers so that they don't show up as spam likely. They show up as like registered phone numbers. So I would definitely do that. It's a free service through Mojo. Uh, but I think we may still have to like keep swapping out those numbers every so often because I have a feeling they're probably still going to get flagged as spam. And then like folks like block the numbers or whatever. So like you want to refresh your numbers every now and again. Don't take anything personally. Um, Pre-qualified listing appointments, um, somewhat old school. Uh, not every listing appointment, like you're going to be, once you get in the mode, you're going to realize like it is somewhat easy to set an appointment. The, the trick becomes like, is that an appointment that's worth going on? Because every appointment is going to cost you anywhere from two and a half to three hours between prep, driving, showing up and all that. Not every appointment that you or your agent's book is going to be worth going on. So I think like teaching them a pre-qualification script, uh, the beauty of that, number one, it's going to smoke out like the appointments that are not worth going on. But more importantly, for the ones that are worth going on, it's going to give you that intel that I need of how do I need to approach this appointment? What do I need to say? What do I not need to say? What are their hot buttons? What do I need to avoid? Like, why didn't the home sell? What is their psychology that I'm going to need to address on the phone call? Like, I need that intel going into the appointment. Uh, have a dialed in listing presentation. So this is not your sphere of influence. This is not a buyer consult. This is not a come list me call. Uh, their first agent screwed the pooch. You best believe that they're going to be scrutinizing the second go round a little bit harder. This is a job interview, right? So you got to bring it and you got to, you got to connect with people. You got to have provide value. Uh, this is not like a show up and, oh, I'm awesome. And therefore they're going to sign with me because, you know, all my friends and family do. Um, I'm kind of old school. I know like everybody's super casual these days, but I, I think you show up suited, booted, chest out, chin up. Uh, once again, this is a job interview. Uh, this is something where they are going to be scrutinizing you a little bit harder than their first agent. A lot of times they don't know you. So you are a foreigner. So if you're showing up like Mr. or Mrs. Super Cash, um, I don't think you're going to be able to, to garner as much authority, respect, and, and trust. Uh, and then these folks are looking for confidence. They are looking for certainty. They had certainty in their first agent. Their first agent screwed the pooch. They've, their belief that they can get it sold or that a real estate professional is worth paying has been shaken a little bit. So you need to show up with that confidence, with that conviction of I am here to help. Okay. And I know what I'm talking about. Um, this video doesn't work. So just skip over this. Um, these are my mailers. So uh, this is my day one piece. It's a eight and a half by 11, like glossy thing that gets mailed out. Eight and a half by 11 envelope, handwritten return address, handwritten like send to address. And then uh, this fourth piece, and you guys can scan the QR codes and like you'll get access to the files. The fourth piece is my, uh, we've succeeded where others have failed. So that's like a list of the before and after of those 110 transactions that I've sold. Um, you know, we keep a running spreadsheet of all the expires we sell, which is a good idea just because you can keep track of it. But I think it's worth compiling that for your team, your brokerage, your agents, whatever, of like, this is our track record working with, with folks like yourself. Uh, these are my subsequent mailers. So it's like nothing super fancy. It's the same mailer every single time. It's basically a simple letter of like, here's what we offer that your previous agent may have not have. Um, I need to add a guarantee to this. If you have some sort of guarantee, you know, we'll sell it in so many days or it's free or we'll buy it or whatever. Uh, I think it's a very good thing to include in there. And then I always include the evidence of success piece. Um, and these are just black and white, so they're super cheap. Uh, these, this is the sequence that I mail those out in. And the way I keep track of that is our mailer tracker spreadsheet. Uh, you guys can scan that and get access to it. Um, we have this built out with conditional formatting. If you don't know what that is, just Google it. Basically, we could just plug in a date and then it lights up, you know, green when it's go, when it's like the day to send it. It lights up red uh, when it, we're behind. And, you know, that's just an easy way for us to keep track of it. Uh, and you guys have access to that. Questions, concerns, thoughts, fears? Let's open it up to questions in the last five minutes here. Thank you. This has been amazing so far. Thank you, Chris, sir. I Chris, have a question. You, oh, go ahead. You could go ahead. Sorry. 
Uh, I was gonna say, Chris, do you use the same system with the day one, two, three, four expired that maybe are a little bit older? Same process, do you change it? So me personally, I've been calling these for the last six years. So like the old expired that like I started with a day one, but I think if you're going to tap into old expireds, I think setting them up on a 90 day cycle makes sense. It's kind of like Jason Pantana talks about like matching their speed. If you're super hardcore on somebody that's been off the market for two years, I don't know how well that's going to go. Hey, Hello. go ahead, Danny. Yeah. So I have a question. Uh, just wondering, cause I, I didn't catch, uh, earlier on what, what, so you use Vulcan and then you add on Mojo or you use just Mojo? Uh, both. So Vulcan is a data provider. Uh, they have a dialer component, but it's pretty elementary. So I've got Vulcan for my data. I've got Mojo for my dialer. You can sync the two very easily. So that way the fresh, the fresh Vulcan data, like the new expireds, they just automatically feed into my Mojo um, every morning. So you automated that. It, it it does it for you. It's not like you just like literally sync the two, kind of like a, an API integration, and then it just auto feeds. What you're going to have to build out for your team or yourself is the action plans in Mojo, and then just kind of like figure out if you got multiple people. One thing, full disclosure, I'm trying to figure out right now is how do we have multiple people working the same leads? I don't think there's a good way to do that in Mojo. So I'm trying to figure out a workaround. Um, but your real homework is to set up the action plans. Um, so that way, like when you assign a new lead to an agent, you just like auto assign the action plan and then their sole job is just to follow the plan. Okay. So you, all you have to do when you get to the office after that sinks in is just press the start button. It's already set up for a call in the morning. You betcha. And that's the key. All right. Nice. Thank you. Yep. So Chris, are you recording your calls as well? So you can kind of um, go back and listen or even, or for the agents who are maybe starting where the calls are recorded, they may have fumbled it or may or may not have known what to say exactly. And are you reviewing those with your agents to help them grow and become better? Hey, you should have said this. And um, how are you handling that? Yeah, so so the the call recording is only like twenty five bucks a month, so it's not expensive at all. Um, Ernest, that's a very good idea that I'm I'm something that I'm not executing right now, just because of a uh, well, I don't want to make excuses. I'm not doing it, uh, but that doesn't mean it's not a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but even if like you know, now that I'm thinking about it, even if you're somebody that's that's restrained for time, I think even if you're recording the calls, so at least you have them. And like, even if you're not reviewing every call, if they come to you and they say, hey, Ernest, like I really got my ass handed to me by Mrs. Jones, you know, this morning, you can pull it up and you can say, all right, well, let's listen to it together. And yeah. then you can kind of coach them up from there. Yeah. So that's what kind of we've been doing is like, again, like reviewing those and also reviewing the wins. Hey, I got an appointment. This is what I said. And then just kind of uh, just kind of going over that with the agents to build the confidence and just helping them build and grow. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. I'm writing that down. 